Are you looking to move your existing on-premises file share to the cloud? Azure File Share is a great way to get started in the cloud and still provide on-premises connectivity. In this video, I'll walk you through getting Azure File Share set up and connected to your on-premises Active Directory network. Here's a diagram of what we'll be working on. First, we'll need to create our resource group. Uh, secondly, we'll need to create a storage account within the resource group, and then we'll create the file share within the storage account. Then we'll test the connection from a client, uh, Windows 10 client. We'll download the necessary modules for, for Azure. We'll connect uh, to our Azure subscription from PowerShell. Then we'll uh, connect our storage account to Active Directory. And then we'll uh, map a drive to uh, our file share from our on-premises client. We'll set up 80 permissions um, on the file share. And then finally, we'll set up uh, Azure Backup for our file share. Some requirements before we get started. We need to have Active Directory set up. And your on-premises Active Directory needs to be synced to Azure. The client needs to be Windows 10 or Windows 2012 R2 server or later, and it has to be domain joined. We also need an Azure account. I'll post a link in the de description below if you need to set up an account. All right, let's get started. First thing we need to do is open up the portal, so portal.azure.com. The first thing we'll need to do is create a resource group. Everything in Azure lives inside of a resource group. So let's go to uh, create resource. And then in the search bar, we'll type in a resource group. And hit create. First thing you need to do is choose your subscription. I have uh, several, so I'm going to choose the one I want to use for this project. And then we'll type in a resource group name. I like to name the, the uh, resource group uh, something similar to what I'll be creating in the project. So um, I'll probably put file share somewhere in the name, and then at the end, put RG for resource group. So let's put in um, test file share. RG, okay, and then region, I'm going to choose uh, South Central, and then let review and create. Create, looks good. And it's already created, so we'll just go straight to the resource group. Okay, that's not going to work. So um, you can also go over here to resource groups. Oh, now it comes up. Okay, now we can go in here. All right, finally, the resource groups came up, so I'm going to choose the one that I created. All right, so I need to create another, I need to create a storage account. So I'm going to create up here. Let's hit create. All right, so same as before, we'll choose the uh, subscription. So I'm going to choose the same one. And I'm going to choose the resource group that we created earlier. And then a storage account name. Uh, now, this has to be 15 characters or less because we're going to be adding this to our on prem Active Directory later on. So let's type in test. Um, store, I don't know, one, two, three, four. Okay. And then 
It doesn't have to be in the same region, but I'm going to just, for consistency sake, I'm going to put it in South Central US. And then for performance, we can choose standard or premium. I'm going to leave it standard. Um, the big difference between standard and premium is that premium allows you to not only mount SMB volumes, but uh, you can also mount NFS. So, um, I mean, not volume shares. So we'll leave it at standard for redundancy. Uh, I'm going to leave it at locally redundant. Um, I'm going to go hit next here because I want to shake. I want to come back to sooner in a second. So let's go to advanced. I'm not going to change. The only thing I'm going to change in here is enable large file shares. Now that we have this set, I'm going to go back over here because if you enable large file shares. Even though all of these are available, the only ones that are supported with large file shares are locally redundant storage and zone redundant storage. If this is a production environment, I would set this to zone redundant. But since we're just doing this as a test, I'm going to set it to locally redundant. Let's go back to large file share again. So with large file shares, the default limit is 5 terabytes. But with uh, if we enable large file shares, it bumps that up to a maximum of 100 terabytes. All right, let's move on to networking. I'm going to leave this as public endpoint. Uh, and then down here for routing, I'm going to leave it uh, Microsoft to Microsoft network routing. So the difference between Microsoft network routing and internet routing is that Microsoft network routing um, puts the uh, point of presence closest to the client. Um, and internet routing um, routes the closest point of presence to the storage account. So um, it would seem that uh, the Microsoft network routing would be a little bit faster for the end user. So we'll leave it at that. For data protection, I'm going to leave all these set as the default. And I'm not going to create any tags. I'll just hit uh, review and create. This all looks good. And then I'm just going to hit create here. This will take a little while, so I'm going to pause the video. All right, the storage account's been created, so let's go there. Okay, finally came up. I don't know what's going on today, but the connection seems super slow. All right, so um, here's the storage account. You'll notice there's a file shares option right here, so let's go ahead and click on that. This is actually the easiest part of this whole process, creating the file share. Okay. So you'll notice the maximum capacity is 100 terabytes. Uh, that's because we enabled a large file share. And then uh, let's go ahead and create a file share. And we'll just, I'm going to call it test share one. And then uh, I'm going to set this to hot, which is recommended for sharing files with teams. And I'm going to hit create. That was super fast, okay. All right, now that we have the file share created, we need to uh, test the connection. So let's open up the file share and let's hit uh, connect. And you can set the drive letter to whatever drive letter you want it to be. We'll leave it at Z and we're gonna leave it to storage account key because we're just doing a test for right now. This is not recommended for production because it, actually has the um, storage account key in the script. So um, I'm going to go ahead and copy the script, and then we're going to move this over to the uh, client we'll be running it from. All right, from the client, I'll go ahead and paste in that script that we copied in the PowerShell here. You notice the first part of the script is testing for uh, port 445. That's, um, that's to make sure that outgoing SMB works from this machine. I'm going to turn off persist because I don't want this re remapping next time we get on. And this all looks good, so let's go ahead and run it. OK, the test worked. It shows that it did map the Z drive. So if I go Z, there's nothing in there, but it does map to the Z drive. So we know that the uh, File share works now. Okay, now that we know that the connection works, 
Let's go back to the console and then let's go back to the file share. Okay, so there's no files or folders in here. Um, we actually need to go back to the storage account, so let's do that. You'll see right above the share name, um, it says Active Directory Not Connected, so we need to get that set up. So let's hit uh, the Not Connected link there. And you can, you can either set this up for on-premises Active Directory or Azure Active Directory domain services. I'm set up with on-premises Active Directory in hybrid mode, so I'm going to hit uh, set up under this. Okay, so step one is enable Active Directory authentication, so let's click on that. I'm going to right mouse click and open up a new tab. All right, so here are the instructions for getting this set up. First thing we need to do is uh, make sure we have .NET Framework 4.7.2. Just about, I think all Windows 10 has that already, so I'm not worried about that. But then we also need to download uh, the AZ Files hybrid module. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this URL over to my um, test client. And let's open up a browser and pull that down. All right, so let's uh, scroll down to where the download was for the module. And let's we'll grab the latest zip file here. Let's go and extract the zip file. And we'll put it under, uh, let's create a new folder. All right, so we have the files unzipped. Okay, so now we got the unzip. We need to go back to the web page and copy the script that was in there. Okay, here we go. So I'll copy this and we'll paste this into PowerShell. We'll just re run each one of these, make sure everything runs correctly. Yes. Oh, another thing, you need to be in the same directory as the files we extract or the next command won't work. Oops. All right. Run once. Okay, so that's done. Now we can import the module. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna pause the video. You'll notice I got an error here. It just requires that this be run a second time to import it again. Okay, now that we have the module installed, we can connect our Azure account. So if you remember when we were setting up the resource group, I have more than one subscription ID, so I need to import I need to put that in here as well. So I'm going to put in subscription. And to find the subscription ID, we're going to go back to the portal. 
So let's go back over here and we'll go to home. And then we'll choose subscriptions here. Okay, so here's the one I want. So I'm going to copy this here. Control C. All right. So back to the client and paste that in here. And then I need it down here as well per variable. So I'm going to put that in here too. All right. So let's go ahead and run this. And it should prompt me for a login. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to choose the account that's here that I'm already logged in as. And I'll type in my MFA code. I'll pause again because I don't know how long this is going to take. Okay, it finished, but I've got these token errors. Um, it did actually connect, so I'm not too worried about this up here. Um, we do need to fill out these um, variables up here, though. So I'm going to go through and fill out um, the resource group name, my storage account name, and the domain account type. Um, and then the distinguished uh, OU name that I want to use on-prem for that uh, computer account to go to. The um, I should back up a little bit. The storage account is going to be created as a computer account on Active Directory. So... Once we get all this filled out, this will be set up as a computer account. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it and then fill this out, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I've got all of my uh, variable settings set up here now. So I'm going to go ahead and run all these. I can actually leave out the, the domain account type because computer account is the default anyway. Same with the encryption type, but I just left it on here for demonstration purposes. Okay, so those variables are all set. And then we'll just run this um, select AZ subscription command. Same thing, I'm getting token errors, but it's obviously ran, it's uh, connected. All right, so now um, this command actually doesn't work. So I'm gonna put in a different command here. Um, so let me pause for a second here. Okay, so the changes I made, I changed the actual uh, join command to AZ storage account. Um, and then I also added the domain here. Um, like I said earlier, we can actually leave this out right here because it's already gonna be the default. I don't really need that in there, so let's take that out. And then the account type, same thing. We can leave this out. All right, let's try running this here and see what happens. Go ahead and pause this here. Okay, this failed, but I think I see what happened here. I had, um, instead of organizational unit name, I had in here organizational unit distinguished name. So let's try second time here and see if this works. I'll pause the video again. Okay, that's what it was. Um, it seems to have worked that time. So we should see under users and computers on our local Active Directory should show us. Yeah, here we go. So I saved it under resources. And here's the storage account name right here. Okay, now that that's configured, let's go back to the portal and make sure that uh, the file share is configured properly. So if we go back over here and go to file shares. Okay, now it says configured, so we're set up properly here. All right, now that that's set up, we need to set up a role assignment. So we need to come back over here to access control. And under add, go to add role assignment. And for roles here, in SMB. And 
I'm going to set myself up as an elevated contributor. Okay, and then you can you can set up a group here, but I'm just going to put my name in here instead. Okay, and hit save. Okay, now that we have those permissions set up, uh, let's map our file share to the client. Actually, let's go back to the portal here. We need to go back to the file share because we need the script for the AD uh, configuration. So let's go to the file share. And we're going to hit connect again. And this time we're yeah, it's already set to Active Directory. So let's copy this script right here. We're going to change the drive letter. Let's make an M. And we'll copy the script. Now let's go back over to the client. And then we'll open up another window here. Paste that in. And instead of using PS Drive, I'm going to put in, I'm going to use NetUse instead. And we're just testing, so I don't need it to persist. So let's see if that works. Okay, so now if we go into Windows Explorer, should see that drive on here now. Yeah, there it is. All right, so now we're uh, we're now mapped to the um, file share on on Azure. Okay, now that we're able to map the drive, let's go ahead and set the 80 permissions. So let's go back to the share here. All right, mouse click and go to properties. And under security, let's do um, edit. And we'll do add. And I'm just going to put my name in here. Oops. And I'm just going to give myself full control and hit apply here. Sure. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So that's all set up. So now when we create a folder under here, uh, this share should have the same permissions that we just set up at the share level. Let's call the folder test. And if I go to permissions, it should be set the same as it was at the share level. Yep, so it's got my name, I've got full control. All right, so that's all set up. So the next step is setting this thing up for backup. All right, to get backup set up, let's go back to the um, console again. And let's close this out here. And we're already in the share, so um, from here, let's just click on the backup. And we're going to create a new vault because we don't have one already. And you can call it whatever you want to, but it's going to give you this default name here. I'm just going to leave that as it is. Um, under resource group, um, it already had the correct one in there. And then for the backup policy, I'm going to choose edit this policy. And let's call it something else. Um, No, oh, oops, okay. Doesn't like that. All right. And then I'm gonna make it uh, central time. All right, and then I'm gonna leave the default for 30 days. This You can push this up to 200 days if you want to, but that's for daily retention. You can also do weekly, monthly, and yearly. So we'll leave it at 30 days for daily, and then let's do a monthly one for Sunday. We'll save it for 60 months. 
and then for a yearly one, the first January, and we'll do it for 10 years. Okay, so let's go ahead and create the policy here. And then let's go ahead and enable backup. I'm going to pause the video while it creates. All right, the backup created. So let's go back into the share here. And let's go to backup. It's thinking about it. Okay. Um, it's set to back up at 7.30 tomorrow, I believe. But um, let's go ahead and do a backup now so we can test this. <clears throat> um, we don't want to retain it for a month. Let's just retain it until tomorrow. So let's change the date. I'll make it 31st. Okay. All right. It took a while to back up that one folder. But let's go back into, let's look at snapshots here. You'll see there are, there's our backup that we just did a minute ago. So let's go back to backup here. Actually, let's go back to the file share. I want to I want to delete that folder so we can do a test here. All right. So we'll delete the directory. Yes. All right. Let's test the resource. Let's go back to backup here. We're going to do file recovery. And you have to select a restore point. So let's hit select here. And we only have one restore point. So I'm going to select that one. Hit OK. And then we'll just have it overwrite existing if it's already there. So let's, we need to add the folder or file, whatever you're restoring. And then let's click on test and hit select. And then do restore. All right, that's funny. It took a short amount of time to restore than did the backup. All right, so let's go back to the share and see if it's there again. All right, so it did restore the directory. All right, so we're finished. Let's go back and review what we did. In this video, we created a file share that required a storage account and resource group. We tested the connection using the storage account key. Then we downloaded the AZ module and connected our Azure account. We also connected our storage account to our on-premises Active Directory. We set up the role and mapped our file share to a drive. We set up AD permissions on our file share and set up backup. I'm hoping that this video helped you out. If you did, please hit the like button. If you have any comments, you can put those below. Also, I've put uh, under the description the links that I used to create this video.